You want to do this to retire early as a travel nurse. Welcome back to another episode of Stronger Nurse Universe with your girl, Captain Amazing, and her head, Captain Amazing. Now, everyone can see the sorry state of our economy in 2023 and beyond. A recession is looming. It seems like the cost of living, interest rates, and inflation rates are in a race to see who can beat their personal all-time high. While travel nurse wages, oh, they did not hear the referee's whistle. Oh, you can imagine what it would look like to be a healthcare worker in these climbs. Trust me, <laughs> nurses are getting the shortest end of the stick right now. And what's worse, I'm beginning to notice a trend, a trend among older, retired, or near retired nurses. You wanna know what that is? Most of them do not have enough money to leave the hustle behind. Most nurses realize that they may need to work until they die. Damn it. Dun, dun, dun. I don't know about you, but I will be damned if I spend 50 plus years doing grunt work as a nurse at the bedside. I will not do it. My mother is a perfect example of what I'm trying to illustrate. She's a veteran travel nurse and has been a bedside nurse for over 25 years. Yep. And guess how much money she has saved for retirement? $50,000. That's it. Yep. You heard that right. $50,000. That's all she got. She ain't got enough cash to say bye-bye to this life and is already 60 years old. Now, y'all know me, we've had many candid and frankly, very uncomfortable conversations, especially because it pains me that she failed to plan for this moment. I'm the oldest of six children. And when she turned 45, each one of us out of the six was already financially independent to some degree. As teenagers, we had jobs, and began taking care of our expenses. I moved out at 17. Usually, that would mean more money for the retirement kitty or maybe some investment, but sadly, that's not what happened. So this leads me to my point. A lot of people don't understand that the apple don't fall far from the tree, and so when I tell you about my past woeful decisions, you can understand where I got my money philosophy from. I can hardly remember a time when we had conversations about investments or savings. It was usually about who had what, okay? This is a poverty mentality. These conversations are usually about who had the most expensive mortgage, the fanciest car, and the highest paying job. And the winner got to keep bragging rights. And this is amongst my siblings and my mother but it gets better, okay? My mother's grandest investment idea is an expensive mortgage on a dilapidated house in a safe pill filled with overpriced gold and diamonds. I mean, to the brim. She defends this by claiming that these assets help retain equity. I am constantly discussing this with nurses, some of whom have been working for more than 20 years at the bedside. And one thing seems to be recurrent. The absence of a well-defined exit roadmap. Don't you want to leave? I mean, when you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And with retirement, plans to make things right. I met a colleague who is 83, 83 years old and still working in a cardiology clinic because she can't afford to retire. That is probably the saddest news that I have ever heard in my nursing life. Another nurse that I met, she told me that she was saving a whopping 13% of her income towards retirement in a 401k account with a 6% match while leaving the rest covered by social security. I really hate to be that person, but um, the projected return on investment for retirees collecting social security, that don't look too good. So here are five things 
that I've been paying attention to that have helped me. And I believe that if you choose to practice these tips, you're well on your way to a happy and peaceful retirement. Number one, seeking financial literacy. What is your fire number? There literally is no excuse for leaving your finances to fate, dumb luck, or even worse, the government. Don't do it. Seek out books, seminars, and coaches to help you on this journey. I mean, yeah, you can perform a nasal gastric tube insertion with your eyes closed, but my question is, do you understand balance sheets? Your goal should be to understand savings, investments, taxation, and all the rules of money. Remember, you're doing this with a long-term strategy. If you need a refresher course on what you need to learn about investments, I'll leave a link in the description box for you to go and check it out. Second most important thing that you can do is have a health plan. Do not wait until it's too late. Learn everything you can about your body. Go for constant checkups and never ever take any symptoms of illness for granted. Also, make it a habit to strength train every week. You want some guns. Sarcopenia, which is muscle wasting, is a common geriatric problem. But you can combat this by simply incorporating this into your practice and into your weekly routine. I go for 20 minutes once a week to, it's called The Perfect Workout. And it's by, I read a book, it's called Body by Science. Besides your time, your health is your greatest asset. I have a video on my channel where I explain how you can make a stronger nurse care plan. You can also check out this video in the description box. The number three thing that you can do to improve your life is to invest in a high yield savings account. Another excellent hack is to max out your 401k contributions Woo! and Roth IRA. But in my opinion, it's always best practice to set aside 10% of your income in a high yield savings account. You never know when you'll need the money. Fourth thing, create a budget. I know a lot of people do not like to hear that word budget or use that word budget, but let me tell you something, create a budget. Did I mention that you need to budget your lifestyle? You must make plans for your current and future expenses. Think about this. What will happen if you live to 80 or, 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 or 103? Will you need to rely on someone else to pay your bills? Cause no one enjoys being a burden. Live within your means and don't let all that pressure from social media get to you. All that fancy shit isn't worth much when you're sick and unhappy. Number five, maintaining relationships is gonna be one of the hardest things that you will ever do as a travel nurse. And this fifth one, super, super, super important. You need to cherish quality relationships. Cherish them because a good person is so hard to find. A very good person is one of the hardest things that you will ever find in your life. Do not waste your time on people who one, do not care about you, or two, add value to your life. As you age, it gets easier to know what you want and the kind of people that you need in your life. There's nothing wrong with having a few less friends, especially if it buys you peace of mind Oh, that is a worthy trade-off that I will take any day. And well, that's all I have to share with you in this video. But there's so much more that you need to know in order to live a happy and fulfilled life as a travel nurse. And I am committed to sharing my experiences and mistakes and lessons that have helped me. You can turn on your post notifications and subscribe to this channel to keep getting more informative content. Thank you for tuning in to Stronger Nurse Universe. This is Captain Amazing. I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye.